cataractcoach.com, astigmatism treatment in RKIs. So pearls for fixing astigmatism in these radial keratotomy patients. You can see this patient had prior eight cut RK, and you can see those eight radial incisions there. We've already made a presentesis, and we're putting some viscoelastic inside the eye. Now with eight RK cuts, we're able to place our cataract surgery incisions in between those RK cuts without intersecting them. Now look carefully, I make the incision on the steep axis, and I don't want the tunnel length to be too long. I want a reasonable tunnel length, so I'm really changing the angle of the blade to enter the eye, and I want to just make this about 2 millimeters, maybe 2.2 millimeters wide. Do not intersect the RK incisions. Now the three dots there on the cornea above the incision and then 180 opposite, that's the marking for the steep axis of astigmatism. So the steep axis has been marked there in that corneal epithelium, and now getting that rexus done. Now the case is otherwise relatively routine with RK patients, but you know, keep in mind a few caveats. And those things are, number one, the lens calculations, and number two, the treatment of the astigmatism. Now we've talked before about the calculations, and in patients who have RK, you want to ensure that you're not going to end up with a hyperopic surprise. So usually the problem we end up getting is that our keratometers and other devices, topographers, are not able to measure that central cornea appropriately in these RK patients, and we underestimate the power of the cornea, therefore we put in a too low of a lens power and the patient ends up hyperopic. So what you want to do is just keep in your mind that, yeah, every patient with RK, you're going to have to add something to the IOL power. So it's going to be higher than you think. So in a case like this, where the patient has eight cut uh, RK, if you look at an old school calculation, you know, those aren't going to be accurate. You can look at a holiday calculation, and if it says, it's, for example, it says 22, it's probably going to be more like 24 here. So I prop prolapse the nucleus out of the bag here. We're just chopping it in a couple little pieces, and we'll emulsify that pretty easily. So for the astigmatism part, remember, too, that sometimes the RK patients, these, these incisions, these radial cuts were made by hand. And there is some variability, and sometimes these patients can have an irregular central cornea or irregular astigmatism. Now, this patient is going to get a toric lens. And with a toric lens, I want to make sure the central cornea, the central few millimeters, really has a very symmetric and stable astigmatism. And that's going to allow me to really use that toric lens to our benefit to help really address that astigmatism. And so if the central cornea is very irregular, has irregular astigmatism, or it's very asymmetric, well, then you may not want to put a toric lens in. Again, it depends on surgeon judgment. In a case like this, you may not want to make an LRI, a limbal relaxed incision, but you know what? In some cases, you may. So there are no hard and fast absolute rules. It's all surgeon judgment. In fact, that's what makes our surgery so much fun, right? So the nucleus is out pretty easily removed. Now you can see, look at the incision, the phaco incision itself. You can see the little swelling there from the fluid that, that goes inside and out of the eye. That's normal. But what you don't see is the RK cuts themselves are already swelling right now. So if this patient preoperatively, let's say your keratometer read the Ks of 35 diopters. On post-op day one, this patient may have K values on that same keratometer that read like 33 or 33 and a half diopters. And so it's a little extra flat because those peripheral RK incisions swell, they flatten the central cornea, and as a result, initially on post-op day one, the patients tend to have a bit of hyperopia. That's okay. If they're about a plus one or even up to plus two hyperopia on post-op day one, look at the K values and see does it correlate. And in that situation, just wait, wait, wait. Let the patient heal up. And it can take a couple days or even a couple weeks or a couple months for all that swelling to go out of the RK incisions here. So again, now you see the toric marks that are there on the cornea. We're going to deliver our lens here, single piece acrylic lens. That it's a toric lens, of course. So we'll put that in here. And we'll let that open up. And then we'll get that aligned up very carefully. And patients with the RK, also remember, you want to check all the RK incisions at the end of the case. So you'll see I'll use a fluorescein dye strip to just make sure there's absolutely no leakage. And then we'll also be very cautious in the way that we hydrate that phaco incision. And what you normally are taught, which you should absolutely avoid in this RK patient, at least in my opinion, is you don't want to hydrate the lateral walls of your phaco incision because they're so close less than a millimeter away from the arcane incision. And you can track fluid along there, 
And that could go and widen up or even split open that RK incision. So I like to hydrate just the roof of the incision. I'll show you that here. Remember, it's a complete cataract case. A little bit of a long one. We're looking at like seven minutes today. So we'll get this flipped over and turned around, and let's get that lined up right where we want it. You also may realize that you're going to have a harder time using some sort of interoperative aberrometer to try to read these eyes. A lot of times those devices get confused by the RK. Now look how I hydrate. Just the roof, mid-stroma, not near the end of the uh, endothelial layer, not near decimase. And certainly, I'm not going left and right lateral walls. I don't want that. So now I'll get the lens positioned where I want it. Now the incision sealed up. Do the angle sweep. Make sure there's no retained lens pieces. Make sure no viscoelastic stuck in the angle. Now that torque lens is basically lined up exactly where I want it. Now this will make the patient's vision so much better. This patient achieved beautiful vision. But some things still are the same, which is... Remember, the RK causes for most patients a diurnal fluctuation where their vision's better or worse in the morning compared to the afternoon or the evening. They have this change throughout the day. And so you have to ask the RK patients, hey, when's the best time of day for your vision? They'll tell you, oh, it's at 2 p.m. And then ask yourself, what time are you measuring their eyes in your clinic? And so that diurnal fluctuation is not going to go away with the cataract surgery. Here at the end, just checking the incisions, those all look great. And you saw I put some triamcinol inside the eye, some preservative-free antibiotics, some moxifloxacin, and a little more BSS, get the pressure where I want it still. It looks pretty good there. And now we're going to paint everything with the fluorescein dye. So making sure I'm happy. Are the incisions sealed? So I'll double-check with just the wex cell, and there's the fluorescein dye. Just wipe it all over and make sure there's no leak. And you can even push on the globe a little bit. And yeah, that looks fantastic. No leak at all. The patient had a beautiful outcome. So remember, when you're treating RK patients, you've got to treat the astigmatism as well as the spherical power. Thanks for watching.